Hi guys, Robbie46 here and welcome to my top 10 picks from the 2015 season of MotoGP. Now these are my personal picks that I've chosen, my own opinions, so uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Number 10. Suzuki were back in 2015 and even though they've been out of the paddock for a few years, they came back and their bike was pretty good. They impressed me uh, with the way they went about things. I mean, they'd done a wild card at Valencia in 2014 and blew three engines. But, uh, yeah, the uh, Suzuki's looking good. They're getting their seamless gearbox uh, next year. And um, both riders done really well. Uh, and who can forget their uh, their pole position and second place uh, at the same weekend. Number nine. The Ducati GP15. So Ducati have been struggling for a few years, um, mainly with front end issues. But the GP15 came back strong. Ducati have uh, done a really good job of this. Um, as we saw in Qatar with Davizioso fighting with Rossi pretty much the whole race. The engine's still really strong. And uh, throughout the season it got added new winglets to it. So um, I don't know how many they're going to end up having next year. But yeah, Ducati were really impressed me as well. Number 8. Alex Rins. Now, Rins came up from Moto3 along with uh, his then teammate Alex Marquez. And uh, Rins took to the paddock like a duck to water. Uh, really impressed me. This guy, he's got such talent and... Uh, you know, before we knew it, he was winning Moto2 races. Uh, he made a few mistakes, but, you know, as a rookie to the class, he done such a good job. And uh, I think he's going to be a title contender next year. Number seven. Daniello Petrucci at Silverstone. Now, Petrucci impressed me because it was wet conditions, so really tricky. But uh, he got on with it, and uh, on the satellite Pramet Ducati, he managed to get to second place at Silverstone. He was closing Rossi down a little bit, but then Rossi managed to open the gap back up. But he looked super strong, looked really comfortable on the bike, and uh, it was so good to see him on the podium. I mean, we did have a all-Italian podium, but yeah, really good from Petrucci. Number six. Bradley Smith had his best season in MotoGP to date. The way he went about his season in 2015, really professional. And uh, he done such a good job. Beating his teammate Paul Espargo at most rounds. Being the top satellite bike at the end of the season uh, in sixth place. So top satellite bike. He finished every single race. And uh, although he, he had loads of crashes in 2014, he stopped them in the races in 2015. Really good job, Brad, and uh, can't wait to see what you do next year. Number five, the man himself, Johan Zarco. I mean, it, you couldn't have a top ten without him in it. He'd done such a good job in Moto2. Although he had a few weird weird mistakes in his 1-2-5 days, Johan Zarco showed us the strength that he's got and determination. And there's no wonder why he was the uh, 2015 Moto2 World Champion. Really consistent, really fast. And uh, let's not forget his awesome backflips every time he won a race. Number four. The Brits in 2015 shone really brightly. We had Sam Lowe's win a race in Moto2, get on the podium... Uh, Cal Crutchlow, he got on the podium, Bradley Smith got on the podium, Scott Redding got on the podium, and John McPhee got on the podium. So we had, oh yeah, and Danny Kent as well won the World Championship, and he got loads of podiums and first places. So the Brits in 2015 were really strong. It's always nice to see the Brits on podiums. So yeah, good job. Number three, Andrea Iannone. Now, this was his first season on the full factory Ducati. Um, Pramet Ducati last year in 2014. Had loads of crashes. But he has learned and he is quick. He's done such a good job this year. A constant podium threat. And although the Ducati let him down a couple of times. And he did have 
a couple of crashes. He was really consistent and uh, beat Davizioso in in a lot of the races as well. So, and I'm going to say now that he's going to win his first race next year. And let's not forget they headbutted a freaking seagull in Phillip Island. Number two, Valentino Rossi at Valencia. Although he didn't get the title, son from the back of the grid and finishing in fourth. It was such a good ride from Rossi. Um, the way he was overtaking people and he was determined. He'd done all he could and uh, it was just so, such a good thing to watch. Rossi at his best and uh, yeah, I just couldn't believe how quick he got into the top 10. is really good to watch. So, what's going to be my number one? Well, the guy on the screen now, Danny Kent in 2015. Moto3 world champion, our first British world champion in the Grand Prix paddock for, I think it's 38 years or something. But he done such a good job, winning loads of races, really dominant. But um, after Silverstone, it went a bit uneasy. Um, he made a few mistakes, lost a load of points, but uh, a well-deserved champion and uh, makes you proud to be British. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. That is my top 10 picks from 2015. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to leave this video a like, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.